I mean, excuse me, you have to indulge me. You see, I'm a philosopher. So I'm really curious of something about the implications of this science. Because what you're telling me is you, all bodies and humans need, and even all of nature, need brake functions, if you want, stopping things. And without stopping, without death, you wouldn't have life. In some sense, there's a profound philosophical message in that, I think, anyway. I don't know if you've thought about that. Well, you know, it's, it's all about life and death, right? Yeah. So uh, the cells need sometimes to proliferate and to grow. Yeah. And to, uh, so if we take an example, uh, what happens in, during uh, embryogenesis, where the cells has to grow and keep growing and keep growing. So I would think that tumor suppressors there are not functional. They would not want to stop the growth until they are needed. But in, in, in normal life, as I said, every cell has a limited life. So it has to come to an end. And this end has to, uh, to be, uh, come through through genes that would promote, for example, cell death or apoptosis. Uh, and, and or these tumor suppressor genes now they will be active to stop the growth and to allow for these cells to die. So it is like a car that is going fast and if you don't have the brake, you will have an accident, you will have acceleration. So many things would happen through this uh, process if you don't have the brakes of the car and you will end up with a, uh, a disaster, for example, like cancer, because it is a multiple factors, losing one, losing another, losing more and more, it will end up with a, a, tragi a tragic... Uh, well, uh, well I saw this program on National Geographic, which was on a, the terrible train disaster in Lyon Station in Paris, which a brake function malfunction ended up with the train crashing and killing 36 people into another train sitting in the station. And what you learned and you watched the diagnosis of what happened is there were 10 different steps any one missing, it wouldn't have happened. But it took the combination, that this error combined with this error, this error, I won't go through it. But I assume it's the same in your field. It's exactly the same in cancer. It's exactly the same. Once you lose one gene, and it is connected with another group of genes or another proteins, that will be the acceleration process. We know of that because, again, cancer is mutations, mutations, mutations. It's multiple mutation disease. And, and scientists actually believe that it is, it's different diseases, that it's more than 100 disease that causes cancer. And this is where the challenge comes now, how to stop these things, or how to uh, attenuate it in a certain way. Well, and there are obviously, is there pharmaceutical companies haunting and visiting you, <laughs> bumping you when they read your papers and say, when can you bring this to trial, or is that not happened? How does well, it really work in practice? Well, it's not happening for now, but we have a lot of, uh, uh, of funds and grants that are supporting our uh, uh, research, and we hope that we can really get this to the next step. We are hoping to get this to the stage where we can maybe develop uh, some sort of chemicals uh, that are already used in, in, in the clinic, to activate, for example, VOX, or to inhibit the uh, deletion uh, of VOX. And um, hopefully by then we'll have uh, something more clinical. What's the timeline, do you think, in that? 10 years, or five years? Uh, it's, hard, it's hard to predict. Yeah. Um, uh, my, my lab is focused mainly on the uh, basic research, but uh, we are hoping that somebody will catch up with a translational uh, research and can do some, uh, um, you know, bringing this into reality and, uh, and life. But one of the ways this research works is it's never done in one lab. Right. Either have labs competing or cooperating, both, or both competing and cooperating. Right. You have, uh, you work with several labs in Canada, don't you? Yes, we have uh, very good collaborations in Canada. We have one in uh, University of Toronto with uh, Dr. Uh, Helen McNeil. Uh, working on actually uh, another uh, group of tumor suppressor, but it is um, uh, on how to suppress tumors or how to uh, reveal tumor suppressors or novel tumor suppressor genes uh, in uh, development and in cancer. We have also another collaboration in uh, McGill University 
um, in Montreal with uh, Dr. Uh, Jax Gene, uh, working actually on another aspect of Vox, uh, which is uh, HDL, high density lipoprotein, what is called the good um, type of cholesterol. Oh, I see. Because, you know, uh, every gene has also a normal function. It's not only important for cancer, but it has also other uh, function that uh, is important for the homeostasis of the cell, the normal function of the cell. And we found some really nice findings with uh, uh, Jacques Genet in Montreal about uh, uh, Vox uh, maintaining HDL or important for HDL and cholesterol metabolism. But when you're collaborating and they're doing uh, in Toronto another suppressor gene and he's doing a different function of Vox and the other right. How does that inform your research? Because somehow collaboration with many uh, different uh, uh, la laboratories are very critical to research. Right. What's the exact operation in the networking? That so we, have sh we are sharing reagents. We are sharing uh, uh, information. We are meeting and discussing from everyone's point of view how to bring this to uh, reality and how to prove that this is really important for this problem or for that uh, issue. So uh, we are talking, uh, we have actually grants together in, uh, uh, in Montreal, for example. So uh, that brings you all together to right. talk, it teaches you what, uh, different techniques, you learn different techniques we, from different labs? Absolutely. And we different have, uh, understandings of the physiology and the dynamics of it? So they do set of the physiology, we do more the cell biology and the uh, biochemistry. So it becomes complementary because exactly. it all has to fit together. And if it doesn't fit together, you get an insight. It's very good. Uh, it's bringing two heads and two different backgrounds together. And I think this is how it should work. And this is how it is working. OK, I want to talk about another kind of collaboration, which is with the guys who bring the money or the guys who you know, from, uh, do the publicity. We're sort of exposing this to the public. We expose it to the public. Is it a burden to take it away from the lab, or do you see it as part of the necessary process? Well, no, it's just I mean, Do you it's resent this kind of stuff? It's, it's part of the process. We, we would like to uh, inform people about our findings. Cancer is a public uh, health problem. It's uh, affecting millions and millions of people, and people have to know what's going on in the research. It has been a long time since we launched this war against cancer. And uh, I think it's part of the job to let the public know uh, where we're going, what we have, and uh, uh, asking for their support, of course, and uh, for us to continue. And for the new generation to learn from uh, what we're doing. Because, you know, in the movies, there's the mad scientist doing his cancer research. And then there's these people with money, and they're always on the bad side or interfering. And somebody's trying to get them money, but there are always interferences from I'm a narrow researcher. But it's not like that, I don't think, in reality. Well, we, we, will, we know how to do science. We know how to do the research. We, we're trying hard to get funds and grants. It's not an easy process, I should admit, especially at this time of uh, of life with the bad economy and the crisis. But, but it makes a big difference, doesn't it, when the funds are available? Absolutely. It's, you can get more students, more trainees, and you actually see the, the results. Yes. Without getting more funds, we actually have said of a growth arrest. Yeah. We cannot move uh, forward. And so it is, it's a vital thing. We cannot do science without uh, support. Uh, it costs a lot. Uh, with uh, mice work is a lot of money, uh, clinical work costs a lot of money, uh, students, reagents, you name it. It's just uh, cons consuming a lot of money. Uh, and and, and uh, this is part of our success. Without this, we will have, um, I don't want to say no success, but we will have less uh, uh, success or attenuation of the rate of success. With that, Rami, I want to thank you for mainly not just the interview, but the, all the terrific research you're doing. Your, your papers are clear and very readable for a non-scientist. Thank you. And thank you for that research. Thanks.